Chapter 7 of The Steam Man on the Prairies by Edward S. Ellis. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. The Steam Man of the Prairies. Chapter 7 The Steam Man on His Travels. Young Brainerd had a mortal fear that the existence of the steam man would be discovered by some outsider, when a large crowd would probably collect around his house, and his friends would insist on a display of the powers of the extraordinary mechanism. But there was no one in the secret except his mother, and there was no danger of her revealing it. So the boy experimented with his invention until there was nothing more left for him to do, except to sit and watch its workings. Finally, when he began to wonder at the prolonged delay of the trapper, who had visited him some weeks before, he made his appearance as suddenly as if he had risen from the ground with the inquiry, "'Have you got the thundering old thing ready?' "'Yes, he has been ready for a week and waiting. Well, start her out, then, for I am in a hurry.' "'You will have to wait a while, for we can't get ready under half a day.' It was the hunter's supposition that the boy was going to start the man right off up street and then toward the west, but he speedily revealed a far different plan. It was to box up the man and take it to Independence by steamboat. At that place they would take it out upon the prairie, set it up and start it off, without any fear of disturbance from the crowds which usually collect at such places, as they could speedily run away from them. When the plan was explained to Baldy, he fully endorsed it, and the labor was begun at once. The legs of the steam man being doubled up, they were able to get it in a box, which gave it the appearance of an immense piano under transportation. This, with considerable difficulty, was transported to the wharf, where, with much grumbling upon the part of the men, it was placed on board the steamboat, quickly followed by the wagon and a few necessary tools. The boy then bade his mother good-bye, and she, suspecting he would be gone but a short time, said farewell to him with little of the regret she would otherwise have felt, and a few hours later the party were steaming rapidly up the mad Missouri. Nothing worthy of notice occurred on the passage, and they reached Independence in safety. They secured a landing somewhat above the town on the western side, where they had little fear of disturbance. Here the extraordinary foresight and skill of the boy was manifest, for despite the immense size of the steam man, it was so put together that they were able to load it upon the wagon, and the two, without any other assistance, were able to drag it out upon the prairie. "'You see, it may break down entirely,' remarked young Brainerd, "'and then we can load it on the wagon and drag it along.' "'That must be a powerful strong wagon to carry such a big baby in it as that.' "'So it is. It will hold five times the weight without being hurt in the least.' It was early in the forenoon when they drew it out upon the prairie in this manner, and began putting it together. It certainly had a grotesque and fearful look when it was stripped of all its bandages, and stood before them in all its naked majesty.' It had been so securely and carefully put away that it was found uninjured in the least. The trapper could not avoid laughing when the boy clambered as nimbly up its shoulder as another Gulliver, and made a minute examination of every portion of the machinery. While thus employed, Baldy took the shafts of the wagon and trotted to a farmhouse, which he descried in the distance, where he loaded it down with wood and filled the tank with water. By the time he returned, Johnny had everything in readiness, and they immediately began firing up. In this they bore quite a resemblance to the modern steam fire engines, acquiring a head of steam with remarkable quickness. As the boy had never yet given the man such an opportunity to stretch his legs as he was now about to do, he watched its motions with considerable anxiety. Everything was secured in the most careful manner. A good quantity of fuel piled on, the boiler filled with water, and they patiently waited the generation of a sufficient head of steam. "'Is it all good prairie land in that direction?' inquired the boy, pointing to the west. "'There's all yer can want. Then we'll start. Look out!' Despite the warning thus kindly given, the steam man started with a sudden jerk, that both of them came near being thrown out of the wagon. The prairie was quite level and hard, so that everything was favorable 
and the wagon went bounding over the ground at a rate so fast that both the occupants were considerably frightened, and the boy quickly brought it down to a more moderate trot. This speed soon became monotonous, and as it ran so evenly, Baldy said, "'Let her go, Yonker, and show us what she can do.' The rod controlling the valve was given a slight pull, and away they went, coursing like a locomotive over the prairies, the wheels spinning round at a tremendous rate, while the extraordinary speed caused the wind thus created almost to lift the caps from their heads, and a slight swell in the prairie sent the wagon up with a bound that threatened to unseat them both. It worked splendidly. The black smoke puffed rapidly from the top of the hat, and the machinery worked so smoothly that there was scarcely a click heard. The huge spiked feet came lightly to the ground and were lifted but a short distance from it, and their long sweep and rapid movement showed unmistakably that the steam man was going at a pace which might well defy anything that had yet swept the prairies. As there was no little risk in running at this speed, and as young Brainerd had not yet become accustomed to controlling it, he slackened the rate again so that it sank to an easy gliding motion, equal to the rapid trot of an ordinary horse. Fully ten minutes were passed in this manner when steam was entirely shut off, whereupon the giant came to such a sudden halt that both were thrown violently forward and bruised somewhat. "'Scolp me, but don't stop quite so sudden-like,' said Hunter. "'It's a little unhandy for me to hold up so quick.' "'I'll soon learn to manage it,' replied Johnny. "'I see it won't do to shut off all at once.' Descending from his perch, he examined every portion of the engine. Several parts were found heated, and the fuel was getting low. The water in the boiler, however, was just right, the engineer having been able to control that from his seat in the wagon. Throwing in a lot of wood, they remounted to their perch and started forward again. There was an abundance of steam, and the boy readily acquired such a familiarity with the working of his man that he controlled it with all the skill of an experienced engineer. The speed was slackened, then increased. It stopped and then started forward again with all the ease and celerity that it could have done if really human, but it showed a reserve of power and velocity capable of performing wonders if necessary. As yet they had seen nothing of any travellers. They were quite anxious to come across some, that they might show them what they were capable of doing. "'There must be some passing over the plains,' remarked Johnny when they had passed some thirty or forty miles. "'Plenty of them. But we've got out of the track of them. If you'll turn off summit to the left, we'll run afoul of them afore dark.' The boy did as directed, and the rattling pace was kept up for several hours. When it was noon they helped themselves to a portion of the food which they brought with them, without checking their progress in the least. True, while the boy was eating, he kept one eye on the giant who was going at such rapid strides, but that gentleman continued his progress in an unexceptional manner and needed no attention. When the afternoon was mostly gone, Baldy declared that they had gone the better part of a hundred miles. The boy could hardly credit it at first, but when he recalled that they had scarcely paused for seven hours and had gone a portion of the distance at a very high rate, he saw that his friend was not far out of the way. It lacked yet several hours of dusk when the trapper exclaimed, "'Yonder is an emigrant train! Now make for him!' End of chapter 7